He's angry about mortgages. It's Angry Mortgage. He's swearing. He's cursing loud. He's old. He's opinionated. And he's been doing this so damn long. This program is about mortgages, and this is mortgage advice, but the advice may not apply to your situation. Contact licensed mortgage professionals for specific recommendations before you make decisions about mortgages. You may not agree with Ron, but if you don't, uh, he thinks you're wrong. Oh, and did we say there is a lot of swearing? And we're back. We're back. On the air. Oh, yes. boy, what a hectic week we've had. Hectic days. Oh, wow. Yeah. It is wild. But anyway, that's the mortgage business. Feast or famine, busy or not. We're And sometimes we just have a lot of busy work to do with other stuff. <laughs> Jeez, yeah. Not the truth. Um, here's something important. Mm -hmm. This is a continuation on our story of last week. Mm -hmm. We talked about the incredible disaster of 405 different houses. Yeah being put into uh, corporate receivership, into CCAA. Uh, and if you recall, I'm talking to the audience now, I know you recall, yeah. <laughs> I know you recall, but to the audience, this was a situation in which one mortgage broker had provided effectively all of the uh, first mortgages on the properties and also apparently provided over 600 promissory notes Mm -hmm. in a means to fund uh, what looks like renovation mm -hmm. uh, to change these uh, properties into better rate of return rentals. Okay, yeah. that was the plan. That was the that was the story, as we've seen in, in numerous social media posts. Yeah, it's everywhere. <laughs> but this, this somebody's discovered some more social media posts. Ooh. Okay, we have discovered. We've dug that deeper. We've, well, I, somebody just sent them over to me. Like I just got a bunch of new ones. Oh and, no! Oh, uh, and, oh, and uh, the CBC has taken an interest in this. I saw. Yeah. CBC has taken an interest, and they're running the pictures of the owners of all these wild corporations, Happy oh, no. Gilmar, yeah. and uh, yeah, they got owners of the pictures of the owners. These are pictures the owners produced and put online. Mm. Okay, the owners of these four hundred and five residences mm -hmm. rental potential residences yeah. that are now in complete receivership mm. these are pictures of the owners boasting about being on yachts and <laughs> flying in private jets whoops holy shnikes that is a goddamn <laughs> red flag if there ever was one yeah so <laughs> let me, let's roll back let's roll back to another <clears throat> evildoer greg martell there's a guy named Greg Martell who is a mortgage broker on the West Coast in Victoria, mm -hmm. Victoria, BC. And it looks like, by all indications, like, because Greg's disappeared. Mm -hmm. Like, no one mm -hmm. can find Greg. He's mm -hmm. gone. Okay. What was your guess? Thailand? Thailand was my guess. Yeah, that was exactly <laughs> my guess. Uh, but uh, it could be uh, whatever. It it sure he sure as hell cannot be found. Yeah. And he's not, uh, does not appear to be in Canada. All right. Yikes. So Greg is gone with about, 120 to 200 million dollars worth of missing money on promissory notes the famous note loans promissory mm -hmm. notes which has a haunting similarity to this mess okay mm -hmm. again not can't we look when you go to journalism school mm -hmm. there's a whole couple of sections on i never went but this is what i'm told <laughs> Uh, there's like different courses you take and several of them are on investigative journalism right. like how to track down mm -hmm. stuff that you know how to investigate what wrong things have happened to the public mm -hmm. and they are summed up in two phrases the whole all the courses that were ever offered about this part of investigative journalism mm -hmm. were summed up brilliantly in two phrases mm -hmm. follow the money who benefits? Okay. Right. Now, when it comes to following the money, mm -hmm. I'm going to suggest to everyone that yachts and private jets are a bad, bad thing. Okay. Yeah. Like, if the money's supposed to go to buy homes, if all the first mortgage money is supposed to go to buy homes, mm -hmm. and all the promissory notes are supposed to go to the renovation side, 
of the thing, to create a new value and to produce revenue from more renters. Mm -hmm. Where did the money come from to get onto the private jets? That's a very good question. Like, I'm, you know, look, sometimes I mean, it sounds like I'm making fun of this stuff, but I'm not. Because I'm also talking to lawyers who are getting mm -hmm. calls mm -hmm. from the promissory note holders. I had dinner with one just last week. Mm -hmm. And he says there's, these, there's five different elderly women oh, who no. approached him about, we can't, we don't know what's happened to the money. Oh, no. We, we had, you know, we listened to Claire Dredge and the promissory notes were, we gave money for promissory notes mm -hmm. and we can't get, we can't get any answers. Oh, that's heartbreaking. Yeah. Wow. Um, and it's funny because at the dinner, one of the people asked, well, are these people like high net worth individuals? You know, like typically, you know, to do some types of investing, you have to have like liquid assets over of a course. million dollars. Yeah. I mean, there's certain conditions that apply mm -hmm. to investors. And apparently, no. Like these are not very wealthy women. Mm. These are just individual women who knew each other and got involved in this investment pitch. And um, it's, it's a, a good chunk of their life savings. That's fucked up. It's very fucked that's, up. That's elder it's abuse. Very fucked up. It's a version of <laughs> holy well, shit. It, it's certainly not. It, you know, they're very competent women, by the way. Okay, okay they're not. They're okay, not, they're not like in their no, like. No, no, no. Okay, no, okay. I thought like that. that they no. were like no, eighty-five. No, no, and, no, 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 no. They're, okay, they're they're competent women. That's okay? so. Uh, but they're they you know they're not what you would ever ref they, they don't even qualify under the category of sophisticated investors okay? mm. there's a lot of definitions you have to go right. in for that or qualified investors right. they, they're not qualified investors oh, okay? no. uh, but that qualified is a bunch of financial tests right it's not like a competency test mm -hmm. um but yeah um bottom line looking worse every week is what we're seeing looking worse every week mm -hmm. now i know if, if somebody wants to push back and say oh ron you shouldn't be talking about people doing bad things that aren't proven, okay? Well, first of all, I'm not suggesting, I've not specifically used the language about breaking laws, nor mm -hmm. am I going to, I'm not starting to do that either. Mm -hmm. But look, I'm tired of this stuff in this country. I'm tired of people like Fortress Developments <laughs> six, seven years ago, rip people off for $400 million, $300 million, and then you couldn't even talk about it because they their lawyers would send you letters to shut up. Okay, wow. um, you know you've got uh, this crazy Greg Martell situation. Um, you know you're you, you're always having to tiptoe about what you say. Yeah. But the bottom line is there's money missing. Of course. And the guy's missing. Okay. So I you know I, I think it would be great in Canada. Don't get me wrong. I understand you shouldn't defame people. Mm -hmm. But there's just a moment in time when it's too fucking crazy, mm -hmm. you know, where the evidence is just overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And let's face it, people are given a ton of money, millions and millions and millions of dollars. The expectation is to operate these rentals mm -hmm. in a successful way, improve them with, through the promissory note money, and get good cash flows going. Yeah. And it is every single one of them are in receivership. Every single house is in receivership. Wow. So my position, and, and then the pictures of the, the, the people on the yachts and the private jets, okay? Like, enough of this bullshit in Canada. Enough of this stuff. Enough mm -hmm. of having to watch whatever you say, okay? Just like I'm pissed off with the London police about this horrible hockey rape charges. Uh, and they, they say, no, I'm, we're not going to answer questions. We're not going to answer any questions about why we waited four years five years okay uh -huh. like i'm tired of all this we're not answering qu i'm tired of all these people ducking out of telling the truth mm -hmm. okay and i hope canada's getting fed up with it too okay i really do yeah that's anyway bullshit. that's the update we'll keep you updated on these stories there's not much to, to keep you updated on the ponytail steve story you're driving the lamborghini <laughs> that money's gone all the money's gone and he's bankrupt okay the only thing i can update you on is ever there's whether there's ever any charges that's the only thing i can do mm -hmm. uh and his license his mortgage license is gone yeah. so i mean there's not much i can say about mm -hmm. that one unless the cops finally show up and take him into custody okay not saying that they will mm-hmm but that's when I'll report. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, here's a great guy in our um, in our circle, uh, Jeremiah Shamless, a brilliant, uh, one of the top 
uh, land sales and building sales, like big buildings, like yeah. multi-million dollar land deals, mm-hmm. multi-million dollar buildings, $100 million buildings being sold. And he came to us with a great, came to, posted it on X and a number of other posts, um, that there is a process mm-hmm. to building and selling new homes. Mm-hmm. And this is what we got to realize. In the GTA, mm-hmm. and particularly in Toronto, in Toronto, 80% of all new home sales are condo towers. Yeah. They're condominium units. That's reality. Yeah. They're yeah, not building, yeah. there's not a new builder building a ton of houses in Toronto, right? We're condo city for a reason. It's condo <laughs> city. That's it. You're 100% dead on. Okay. Mm-hmm. So he talked about some of the factors and the cost factors that go into building a condo tower. And what was shocking to me was his description of just how much the government share of the condo price has risen. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like it is shocking. He shows that over a 10 year period in Toronto, the taxes, fees, levies, development fees, all the different governmental inputs, if you will, the money the government gets out of yeah. a building. In 10 years, it's risen 600%. Holy shit. Yeah, 600%. Okay. Um, wow. But the, you know, the big question is the why of it. The mm-hmm. why of it. Why has this happened? We talked about it. I've talked about it in other posts and other, other casts is that government doesn't like to increase property taxes because taxpayers get pissed off and vote out the mayor and vote out the, they toss mm-hmm. out the council. They toss out. The, so, because that's a bill you see, right? Yeah, of course. It's a bill that comes in and you say, okay, it's up this year. Let's look at last year. It's no yeah. different than your car insurance, right? Yeah, yeah. When your car insurance comes in. Mm-hmm. You look at that bill, right? Of course. Every time, every yeah. year the, the renewal comes in. Of you course. look, well, what's the difference here? Okay. Yeah. And that's when people get excited. Like, mm-hmm. you know, when it, it, by the way, if the, if the car insurance stays the same, you just shrug and, and accept it. Okay. Mm-hmm. The same with property tax, property yeah. tax, but property tax goes up. It's emotional. Like, <laughs> yeah. Just like your car yeah. insurance, your car insurance goes up 25%. It's goddamn fucking emotional. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. For you get sure. pissed off. So politicians try to avoid that. Mm-hmm. And the way they get around it is finding other sources of tax revenue mm-hmm. because here's what we know they never stop spending like you no one's ever heard of we're going to try to find a more efficient way to deliver services we're going to oh, try no. to use ai instead of 311 operators we're going to mm-hmm. try to use we're going to try to you've never heard that in your life out of a city okay never you never heard about hey we're doing a major um a major push to automate things so there'd be less people working mm-hmm. for us. No, on the contrary, they're opening up more departments for more people. Like, yay, good for more jobs, but like at our cost. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And that's always the danger in government, right? Mm-hmm. Because there is no profit. It's true. There's no profit and loss. Okay. Mm-hmm. But the losses actually go on to the taxpayer. Of course. Right? Because ulti- And that's what you ultimately see is that if the taxpayer is like an infinite source of funds, then there might be infinite spending, right? Mm-hmm. So here's the point that this these costs, these development costs, fees, levies, like you imagine you're building a condo and they tell you, yeah, you have to pay the, the fee for the park improvement or for a new park. Mm-hmm. Well, wait a minute. This is downtown. Where, where the fuck are you putting this new park? Like I, I'm here, I'm building a condo. I, I'm gonna build a condo at King and 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 Young. Mm-hmm. And wh- where the fuck is the park? Yeah. Okay, there's no park around here. It's like a like, little bench with yeah. a, like a well, slice I, of greenery. I, I don't know, or, or nothing, or none. Yeah. Or, oh no, you're gonna improve a park way to hell and gone over here. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, hold on, how am I improving this park? Yeah, we're gonna install a bunch of uh, a pink metal umbrella art sculpture in the yeah. park is how why well, are you fucking in your nuts? honor yeah, well, no we're gonna name it after somebody else okay? oh god like, you're just giving the fucking money okay yeah, yeah. like you pay the money like seriously like you look at these levies and costs mm-hmm. and extra taxes and you say to yourself like what fuckery is this mm-hmm. okay because yeah. what's really happening is when the city pretends to say well this is all to do with the development it's not it's like 70 80 percent is going to general revenue Mm-hmm. okay it's being spent on stuff that's just getting spent mm-hmm. okay other it's not about just the stuff that the building needs okay just the costs ac- accumulated by building a new much bigger building and more people 
sure there's a cost to that, but not that's not where 80% of it's going. Yeah. So the 600% increase, because remember, John Tory actually increased it once like 49% in one year. Mm -hmm. So if you do incremental stuff, like if you increase it, oh, it's 20% one year, 30% the next year. So that keeps getting bigger and bigger. So when you layer on like a 40% increase on top of all those other increases, when you start the baseline, mm -hmm. the increase is like a little bit like compound interest. The base, the, the increase is huge from the yeah. baseline. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, and by the way, this goes on in every municipality. Mm -hmm. Every municipality wants to, by the way, Toronto's thinking of ways to charge you money if you drive in from outside of Toronto, like if you drive in from uh, an outside city, that is, they're going to do put those cameras up and they're going to ping you for a tax. Congestion fee, just for driving in. That's the next plan. Oh, okay. so are they trying to like zone Toronto, basically? They're yeah, trying to say that if you come into Toronto, it's such a magical place, you got to pay to come in. If you're <laughs> going to drive in, won't charge you if you take transit, but because you're paying anyway, right? Of then course. You, then you're paying something anyway. Yeah, okay? yeah. But if you come in with your car, we're going to ding you for a tax. Okay, London does this, by the yeah, way. Yeah, New York, yeah, yeah. New York's starting this. London's been doing it for a while. All I'm suggesting is, look, maybe it's right, maybe it's wrong. All I'm suggesting is there is no end to creating more in tax and new mm -hmm. tax. And the biggest problem with this 600% increase in these development fees and levies and taxes for new builds mm -hmm. is the developer's not paying them. It's the borrower. It's the purchaser. It's the purchaser. Right? Right? Yeah. Right? Every single time. It's the Always. purchaser pays. Yeah. What's well, the developer going to say, yeah, I'm going to go to zero profit so that there can be, uh, you know, all going to eat all these taxes. Never, never yeah. going to happen. Never, ever yeah. going to happen. Okay. So... That's what we're faced with. So how can young people even hope, if they even just decided to, they wanted to buy a condo, like a mm -hmm. one or two bedroom condo, I think a two bedroom condo is like close to a million dollars in Toronto anyway. Yeah. I mean, it's like ridiculous. Okay? Yeah. So very expensive, maybe in the eights, high sevens, eights, and all the way up past a million uh, for two bedrooms. Um, and you're lucky if you get a thousand square feet. <laughs> whew, yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, like the bottom line is, those people, those are the people who are paying. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we haven't even talked about land transfer tax. That's the province has taken their share. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, and any new that's for resale homes, and that just keeps going up. Mm -hmm. and by the way, that didn't even exist twenty five years ago. This is all new stuff. Just the, the the new taxes just keep on coming. Some new okay? bullshit. <laughs> new bullshit keep on coming. Exactly. So that's what we're up against. We're up, so every, up every every. New homeowner, and and it's only going to get. It looks like it's just going to get worse. That's okay? why everyone's leaving. <laughs> well, uh, I hope not. But <laughs> at the end of the day, if you're pushing us out, there's like no chance of us sticking around. You know, not if if your own government is trying to increase the cost. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if thir if somewhere between twenty six cents and thirty cents out of every dollar on a new build is somehow going to the government. And it's gone up 600% in 10 years in mm -hmm. Toronto. By the way, that's Toronto's the worst, but let's assume it's gone up a lot everywhere else too. Mm -hmm. um, that's a hell of a problem. Yeah. You know, that's 600% is real. Well, <laughs> you know, there's a famous guy in uh, the States who's is dead now. A famous senator talked about the defense budget in the United States, which mm -hmm. is obviously trillions now. But yeah. what he said was, hey, listen, you know, a billion here, a billion there, pretty soon you're talking real money. <laughs> So that's what we got yeah. you know, in 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 in, in Canada, you know. Hey, six hundred percent here, three hundred percent there. Pretty soon you're talking real money. Yes, yes, fuck yes, you're talking real money. Yes, yeah. absolutely you are. Okay, all right. Crazy. So with rate news. What's the what's the mortgage rate news for this week? All right, mm -hmm. the, things are happening. Mm -hmm. uh, bond yields have all spiked. Every bond yield, every single term for fixed rates, bond yields affect fixed rates. No mm -hmm. change in variable. Variables affected by the Bank of Canada. Bank of Canada's not doing anything. Next meeting is March. Probably no change again. But why are these fixed rates going up? Because I keep telling you that eventually, sometime by the end of this year, rates are coming down. Okay? Someone's in the comments right now saying, Lon, you liar. I'm not a liar. <laughs> I'm not a liar. Remember, I said a hundred times, it's not linear. There's mm -hmm. bumps along the way. So mm -hmm. what's this bump based on? There's a bunch of stuff, um, you know, strong U.S. jobs. Remember, we just had it, this week, uh, sorry, last week, last week we just had a Canadian jobs number. Canadian jobs numbers went up, but naturally there's some fuckery there, okay? So we had the finance minister, Krista Freeland, pumps a tweet out today, pumps a post out next today and says, oh, look at this. 
37,000 jobs. Our plan is working. We're brilliant. Yes, Canada better. Okay, so here's something really interesting. They're all part-time jobs. <laughs> we lost 11,000 full-time jobs. Yikes. There's just so many more part-time jobs. Mm -hmm. By the way, we had Bell Canada. You know, mm -hmm. Bell Canada is one of the biggest companies in this country. Mm -hmm. okay? They just announced that their BCE is their parent company. And they they just announced last week nine percent total reduction in their whole full time workforce. Whoa! It's, th it's like forty eight hundred people. Okay. Yikes! Yeah. So I guess those full time jobs that Krista Freeland so which is already going backwards mm -hmm. in this report, yeah, going to keep going backwards for sure. Okay. Yikes! Now let's just analyze this quickly. So when you what what happens is when you're when you're losing full-time jobs and replacing them with part-time jobs okay by the way some of the part-time jobs are actually government workers because when the government hires these days they hire under a contract which is mm -hmm. technically part-time like you might be working full-time hours mm -hmm. but you're not considered a permanent employee because you're on a contract right we see it in the mortgage business in the letters we get you know that mm -hmm. this person is on this contract for a year mm -hmm. or whatever but the contract keeps getting renewed mm -hmm. it's a way for the government to pretend that they're not full-time employees when in fact they've been renewed seven times for seven years okay yeah. but so some of them are definitely people working in the public service getting mm -hmm. these sort of one-year contracts or that that's some of the these part-time jobs mm -hmm. because again even though full-time hours they're treated they're, they categorize as part-time yeah okay yeah but there's also a lot of gig work too there's also a ton of gig work it's mm -hmm. uh like let's face it the biggest growth in uh, jobs in uh, the GTA is skip the dishes, Uber and Lyft. Okay, like uh, that's reality. Yeah. All right. Or part time jobs at Tim Hortons, or part time jobs at the gas station. Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. Or part like let's face it, folks. I mean, who in the name of sweet Jesus, who in the name of all that's holy, is going to be able? By the way, I'm an atheist. I probably shouldn't say that, but like, <laughs> who in the name of God? is going to be able to buy a house in GTA on part-time wages. No. You work three part-time jobs, you're still humped. Yeah. Yeah, basically. Right? Basically. You know people who work gigs, right? Um, Not as much anymore. because yeah. um, They gave up and went away. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, my friends and I, we call it, we have, we make adult money now because we're all like, you know, settle right, and stable right. with full-time jobs. But yeah. we did for a very long time and it's shit. It's complete shit because you're still working that full-time hours, but with without the full-time privileges, you know? So it's like, you don't get that benefits. You don't get a uh, vacation leave. Like it's, it's pretty shitty, you know? It is shitty. It's really shitty. Let's sum it up. Like, yeah. I mean, I know that people like Uber and Lyft and uh, Skip and all the rest of these mm -hmm. services and... You know, they say, oh, well, it's flexible. So you should be very happy because it's flexible. Fair. Well, flexible, okay. But if if all you have is these part-time jobs, mm -hmm. then you know, it's not flexible because I got to work all three of the fuckers to be able to keep my head above water. Exactly, okay? exactly. So it, it, your theory is it's flexible. My theory is I'm just desperate to get to all three mm -hmm. during the course of the week because we all know there's people working two or three of these jobs. Okay? Oh, 100%. Most Uber drivers are also Lyft drivers. Like they'll have the yeah. little stickers in their car. And it depends on what's, you know, what app is working or yeah. has more traffic, right? So Absolutely. The same thing. And to your point, you're not <laughs> making enough. You're, you're not no. making enough money no. and, and your life and you don't have any benefits. You got no dental. You got no health care. No. You, 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 don't, you don't have, you can't, how do you take a vacation? Because... You know, you just have to keep working. Yeah. So I know somebody's just going to post on, oh, no, uh, technically speaking, uh, these people are entitled to vacation pay. Yeah, but I know how the vacation pay works. It's like 4%. It, you just get an extra 4%. Yeah. You still can't take any time off. You still yeah. can't actually go anywhere. Oh, but it's flexible, so you can go wherever you want. Yeah. No, no. Jesus Christ. If You you know, it's not, that it doesn't pay enough mm -hmm. for you to say, well, yeah, I'm going to put five, spend five grand on a vacation, you know, in Mexico. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, it just doesn't pay enough. So no. let's face it. The rates are so, the, but the reports are still the reports. Mm -hmm. So the bond yields float up mm -hmm. again. Just to refresh everybody's memory, I know I've said it many times, but the bond yields move up when they feel that the rate cuts are farther off. Mm -hmm. Therefore, encouraging job information means that they figure the rates are going to stay higher for longer. Okay, yeah. the minute that there really is somebody really wakes up and figures out that no, I mean we've just been we grew the population to two point five million people. 
in 28 months and therefore we need more jobs to service those people they got to get fed too right Mm -hmm. so we need more jobs to service them but they're not full-time successful jobs as soon as we get that figured out we'll finally figure out that yeah we shouldn't be so impressed by these jobs reports yeah period yeah and it's like the 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 layoffs just keep on coming right like Mm -hmm. you've read about layoffs too you've seen the news yeah 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 yeah. just keep on coming it's unfortunate yeah, it, 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 and it makes you really stop and think. Like, if we're seeing so many news about layoffs, mm-hmm. why the fuck is Krista Freeland telling us that everything's getting better? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think any of those people who got laid off at Bell think anything's any better at all. I think they no. think it's for shit. Yeah, okay? 100%. 100%. Fuck me. All right. Crazy. We got our answer. Let's look at the answer bag. We got yeah. questions from the... We had questions. That, right, in fact, the nice thing is some of these questions just come up right off of... The podcast. Yeah. They'll say, hey, the I know you're like, yeah, you're going to answer questions. Here you go. Here's some questions. All right. Yeah. We're going to answer them. There we go. Okay. Uh, the first one says, my mom gave us power of attorney that uh, covers her house. We have to do some repairs and need a line of credit. But the bank said no. All right. So what this is all about is that I'm, ge- you know, I'm, I'm sort of reading between the lines of the questions. But what I'm guessing mm-hmm. is mom's gone somewhere and the power of attorney you know, mom's in a retirement home or in, you know, maybe she can't look after her own affairs anymore. Mm-hmm. And she, these people get the power of attorney. So they, they, in theory, they got control of the house. Right. They might want to do some repairs to the house, but, and it needs some money because there's no repairs on a house that's mm-hmm. like a hundred bucks. I mean, yeah, I mean, it starts at 10 grand to repair <laughs> yeah, everything at a literally. house, right? So, uh, or you got a roof, that's 14 grand. I mean, mm-hmm. on and on. So, yeah. And if, if, and logically, if the house is free and clear and it's mom's house, they're in control of it. Mm-hmm. It, through the power of attorney, why won't the bank allow them to put a line of credit on so they can get the repairs done? So here's the deal. It may be a power of attorney and it may be completely legitimate. It may be fully legal. Mm-hmm. But then here's what happens to banks. Because mm-hmm. you know, I keep saying over and over, the big banks in Canada have experienced everything. Mm. They're 140 years old. They've been around. They've seen every kind of shit that could possibly mm-hmm. happen. All right. Yeah. So they're gonna. So when you you say, well, why does the bank have this policy? Well, because this crap fell on their head like 75 years ago. So that's why they don't do it now. And they All said right. never again. <laughs> never again. So here's what happens with power of attorney. Power of attorney is fine. There's a um, there's a person who has it. So let's say they borrow some money against the house. And they get the repairs done, and now there's a fifty, sixty thousand dollar lien against the house. And sadly, mom passes. Right. Okay. Turns out there's like three other three other offspring. Mm-hmm. Okay? So when the time comes to to do the so the the will says that it goes equally proceeds go equally to everybody. Mm-hmm. So then the other three who weren't on the power of attorney jump up and say. Hey fuckers, where did you spend the sixty grand? Oh, mm-hmm. we 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 uh, repaired the house. Fuck you. We think you spent it all. We're we're gonna go after you, and we're gonna go after the bank who gave you the fucking money for doing it illegitimately. Right. And we're gonna sue everybody. Okay. Yeah. Now you might think to yourself, "Well, fuck, that can't be right." I mean, you mm-hmm. know, you, it's got to be. That can't be. It can't have happened that often. Yeah. I got news for you. It happened about four hundred times. Okay. Wow. So the bank finally got to the point. Every bank got to the point of saying, "Fuck me." Why do we need this legal hassle? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because, you know, at a bank, they make money on mortgages. I never listen to anybody who tells you the bank doesn't make money on mortgages. They do. Okay. (laughs) Make money regardless. (laughs) They do. They're in the business to make money for their shareholders, right? So, but they don't make a ton of profit on Mm -hmm. mortgages. In terms of the totality of the huge numbers, Yeah, they do great. Yeah. But in terms of the profit margin, it's not one of their highest highest profit products, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, they got lots of other things they do that produce more profit, mm-hmm. okay? As a margin, as a percentage, okay? <clears throat> so they look at it and say, okay, we had over the years, we've had these 400 lawsuits about these fucking power of attorney things mm-hmm. for borrowing on a house. We've had like 400 lawsuits, okay? So why not just do it anymore? Just stop doing it. Why bother? Why bother? Okay. Like, just don't allow for it. Don't make sure that the only people who can sign for a mortgage or or, or for a line of credit on a house, Mm -hmm. they're the people who are on title. Only they can sign. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, you might say to yourself, well, that's stupid. The banks are losing out on business. 
Well, the bank was mm. the bank is putting out their money in mortgages and lines of credit anyway. Exactly. Okay, they're not going to miss those few hundred, mm-hmm. which caused lawsuits for Christ's exactly. sake. Exactly. Okay? Anyway. In the long run, they're saving money. That's what that's their thought. They've done the calculation, decided that saves money. That's correct. Mm-hmm. So that's the reason why, even if you have a legitimate power of attorney, in many cases, banks won't lend. Mm. Okay, this one says, what's the best way to top equity in your principal residence? Okay, so, you know, that's always to do with, all right, I got a house that's worth a million. I got a mortgage for uh, half a million. I need money for for X project, okay, or for X thing, or I want to buy something, or I want to do this or that. So it comes down to people's making a decision on uh, how I want, if I'm going to take money out of my house equity, what's the best vehicle? All right, so it's all about what the money's for. Mm. Okay, that's the key. It's about what is the money for. If it's for um, renovation, that's going to be a home improvement, and you're going to stay in the house, Mm -hmm. well, maybe you get your budget together, figure out exactly what it's going to cost you to do the home improvements. Mm -hmm. Are you going to add, you know, you're going to finish your basement. Maybe you're going to add a suite there, whatever the case may be. That, That generally goes fairly quickly. Okay, so then the best way to get equity out might be a new mortgage. Because right now, if you, there's really two choices. There's line of credit or mortgage. Mm-hmm. That's it. There's only yeah. two ways you can get money out of your out of your uh, house, mm-hmm. house equity, line of credit or a mortgage. Line of credits are often referred to as home equity line of credits or HELOCs. Okay. Mm-hmm. So the decision has to be, if I know exactly how much money it's, that I need for now, mm-hmm. the HELOC cost, the interest rate, is always higher than a mortgage. Mm-hmm. So maybe it's time to either add a second mortgage through the bank, as many banks allow you if you collateral charge in your home. Many banks will allow you to not just only do a HELOC, they'll also offer a second mortgage, mm. okay? So maybe that would be a better idea. Now, contrarily, if you just aren't sure how much money you're gonna need, or you have multiple projects that you have in mind for the future, like I'm gonna do, I might do this renovation. I also want to put a, uh, you know, a series of down payments on a new construction project mm-hmm. that's you know new construction condo that I want to buy. But I'm gonna make um, payments over the course of a couple of years, and then finally it's gonna be finished. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I only need to put five percent per year for four years. Okay, then probably it's a line of credit because mm-hmm. you only pay the interest mm-hmm. when you use it. Right. Okay. So. If I got something where I know I'm going to be putting out a hundred grand, mm-hmm. but I know it's going to be twenty thousand a year for mm-hmm. five for, or twenty five thousand a year for four years, then I'm going to do a line of credit mm-hmm. because I know I have to have the money available, but I know I'm only going to be using it in increments. Mm-hmm. So maybe line of credit's better. So it it is a simple concept of the situation. If you need the money all at once, maybe some sort of mortgaging or remortgaging is better. But if you know that it's something where you're just going to need the money in the future. Maybe a line of credit's better. Got it. <clears throat> okay, this one says, are Canadian banks safe? We see uh, so much about high renewals and how office towers are in trouble and condo developments fail. Yeah, I mean, I think what I'm, the, the sort of thought that I'm getting out of that is that, you know, you, you read about things that should be bad for banks, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you read about, okay, if these people have got a lot of high renewals coming, um, how are they going to afford it? Right, mm-hmm. uh, so maybe that's those people are not going to be able to pay their mortgages. Yeah. We've heard about all the office buildings downtown aren't as full as they used to be. Mm-hmm. We've read some stories about um, the possibly the and particularly in the states. We've read all kinds of stories about um, the price of the the office towers are falling, the office buildings are falling, mm-hmm. and in some cases, people have even walked away from their their obligations. Right. You know, the people who own the places. Mm-hmm. I was just reading this morning about Brookfield, uh, which is a huge Canadian company, one of the biggest Canadian companies, just walked away from some of the buildings they own in the United States. Just said, oh, no, here, we give up. We're going to go bankrupt for because they all do individual companies to own those buildings, right? right, right. So then if that one particular building has gone to rat shit in terms of vacancy and you mm-hmm. know interest rates and everything else, they can just walk away from the building and say, hey, hey, mortgage people, That's you it. can have <laughs> it. Best wishes. Okay. Yikes. Uh, so... That's a very common practice. So mm-hmm. sometimes we think about this and we hear people say, wow, I mean, there sounds like there's going to be some pressure on the Canadian banks. Are they safe? Okay. Mm. So let me just say categorically, 
They are really fucking safe, okay? Safe, safe, safe. You're always going to hear somebody's going to come up with some bullshit about, you know, you should, you know, it's the big short. The big short's all over again. It's a good movie, by the way. I love that movie. But there's a big short all over again, and all the banks are going to go to rat shit, and you're going to see, I mean, CMHC is going to go broke, going to go bankrupt, mm. it's going to be a disaster. <sighs> no, 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 no. Now, I know there's a lot of comments. going to be a lot of comments. Oh, you're wrong, Ron. They're all in trouble. No, look. Those are the people who are shoving like their money in their mattress. <laughs> I don't know. God knows what they're doing. They've probably got Bitcoin. All you Bitcoin, <laughs> NFT people, all you crypto people. Um, let's just say, don't bother commenting. I'm just going to tell you to shut the fuck up in the comments. Okay. <laughs> so the Canadian banks are very well, well run mm -hmm. and safe. They're well okay. established. Well, you know, even an established company can go to rat ship. I mean, True. you ever heard of a company called Kodak? Yeah. What was Kodak about? They were photography. But like they, they were film, film, right? Yeah, they were film. film. Does anybody use film anymore? No. No, they well, went. They, yeah. they were well established. Yeah. But they went to rat shit. Okay. True. But true. here's one thing we know won't go to rat shit. Mm -hmm. People will continue to need money. That's true. <laughs> That's true. And you know what? Money makes the world go around. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. So we don't have to worry. Unlike film. <laughs> unlike film. Or unlike uh, you know the guys who you, know, you always remember that there's somebody who was making something that's gone like. By the way, see any more fax machines? See too many fax machines? I don't even uh, know. I feel so embarrassed. I don't even know how to use the ones in the, the office. Uh, what the fuck? I'm like, they're so it. big. Yeah, like, what's yeah, going on? Uses it. Yeah. I, was, and then I how, don't know. <laughs> how about how about the photocopier? Okay, like we even do, worse. <laughs> we do have a photo. We actually still have it's a like photocopier. It's like an all-in-one thing. Yeah, but, but it's like we have a photocopier, beyond right? Me. Yeah. But it's just got little spiders, little spider There's webs, spider and stuff webs, crawling the all over it because nobody uses a fucking photocopier except like a whole fax number. Hold it. I give you one that you can't even dream of. You know that selling typewriters won't, used to be one of the biggest jobs. And like I got like all kinds of people in the audience saying, what the fuck is a typewriter? Okay. <laughs> like seriously, like sure. Some things go out of fashion mm -hmm. and, and some new inventions wipe some industries away. Mm -hmm. But this is money, okay? This is money fucking is money. Money is not going anywhere. Money ain't going anywhere, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's not like a new invention. People all say, oh, yes, uh, we believe that uh, fintech will completely disrupt the banks. Fuck you all. It hasn't happened yet. It's not even fucking close. If you want to mm -hmm. get me started on fintechs, we'd need another six podcasts. Because <laughs> I can tell you about every fucking failure in the fintech, mortgage tech, all this fucking prop tech, you name it. Oh, fucked gosh. up. Didn't work, okay? Mm -hmm. So... The question is, are the banks well run? And the banks are well run in Canada, mm -hmm. okay? From the most, almost all five of the big, I think all six of the big Canadian banks are called systemically vital companies. They're systemically, for, and some of them are like world level systemically mm -hmm. required to be fine, okay? Mm -hmm. Like like I think RBC and uh, TD are required on a world level mm -hmm. to maintain their integrity. So we have a great bank regulator, um, they do a good job. They're not per everybody's gonna say, I'm gonna get a lot of comments. So, no, I think they're fucking bad. Okay, fine. You can think whatever you want. But yeah. Like it's 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 look. I do know how they work. I'm not. I'm, I don't work there, but I know how they work. I know how they think. I know the. I followed the trends for 25 years mm -hmm. about how they operate. Okay, mm -hmm. and right now. There's nobody more been actually more careful on mortgages than these guys. Like the way they've tightened things up. It's yeah. been so tight. It's gotten the rules have gotten so tight for the last six mm. years. I know people are going to start to go off on the uh, hey, well, no, like uh, looks like HSBC was taking a lot of shit to foreign uh, income <laughs> verification mortgages. Okay, we're going to fix the income verification part, but here's mm -hmm. the point: every time you hear about mortgage fraud. Mortgage document fraud, and we've talked about it on the show many yeah, times. Many times. Okay. There's no losses. Mm -hmm. There's no losses on those documents. Now you might say, well, there will be soon. Okay. I've been waiting for 20 fucking years for the <laughs> losses to show up. Okay. Yeah. They still haven't showed up yet. I'm 100% against it. I crusade to have CRA do the linkage so we never have to have any more document fraud again. Mm -hmm. I'm a crusader for that, for Christ's yeah, sake. But yeah. look, no losses equal no worries okay mm -hmm. another thing people have pointed out uh have come up in the last week is well okay you said house you know there might be more house activity this year mm -hmm. yeah i think february is going to be a slightly busier house sale 
uh, house sales in Ontario, mm-hmm. potentially a little bit busier house sales in Canada. Um, but I'm not really seeing any signs of the prices going up. Mm-mm. It's not like, I'm not getting that vibe. Like we talked last week about how there's these crazy uh, <laughs> underpriced homes. They're getting all these multiple offers again, mm-hmm. but they're really, really, really underpriced. Mm-hmm. Like they're crazy underpriced. And when you look back on the analysis, I don't think that they really, the people got um, really any more than they would have got if they'd have listed it at the regular price. Wow. And that seems to be continuing. That yeah. seems to be continuing into this month of February. Um, mm-hmm. It's going to be really interesting to see what comes out of February because last year mm-hmm. in 2023, in February, things were starting to really pick up in the housing market because there were a ton of rates in the fours. Mm-hmm. There's like so many three-year rates that f- there was four, four, nine, four, six, nine, like every rate started with a four. Mm-hmm. We don't have that right now. No. You know, it was headed down. We still have a high ratio more. It's probably going to bump up again this week. We still have high ratio mortgages, five year. No, the high ratio is only for CMHC, only for purchasing a house, only under a million, lots of conditions. Uh, doesn't apply probably only in Ontario probably only applies to eight or nine percent of the purchases but Mm -hmm. eh, maybe a little more but it's not a ton okay those rates are like under four for the three year for the five year um high fours but most rates are still in the fives Mm -hmm. with five percent range so last year we were definitely in the strong four percent range like i think we did a couple of mortgages for like four three nine last year on a three year Wow. Uh, in February, no longer. That's not happening. Okay, no. so I think one of the things that is going to impact on the next couple of months is, particularly February, um, it's just not super low rates. Mm-hmm. So, like, imagine me saying that in the fours is super low when we two years ago, two and a half years ago, we were doing like one nine nine five year fixed. But anyway, yeah. those days are gone forever. These are dead and gone. <laughs> dead and gone. That's hundred percent right. <laughs> so. Yeah, uh, we're going to see a little bit more. Uh, certain, I, I'm, I'm not sure whether it's going to be as busy as last year in terms of actual unit sales mm-hmm. in February, but I'm not picking up any vibe of the prices. Prices might just edge up, but mm-hmm. we had some solid upward movement February, March, April last year. Mm-hmm. Right now, I'm not sure that that's happening, so mm-hmm. we're going to have to sit back and watch. We'll okay. see. Which takes us to our favorite part of the program. What the actual fuck. Exactly. What the actual fuck. First of all, some people might be asking, where the actual fuck is the TIFF puppet? Okay, where's that TIFF Macklin puppet? We're, we're, we're fighting through some technical difficulties. We ha- it's in the building. It's in the building. Uh, the, 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 TIFF, the future of TIFF Macklin on the show is definitely there. It's in the building. We're getting to it. I promise. <laughs> By next week, we'll have Tiff Macklin. We called the, him Tiffy. Tiffy. We were give, they've given him a name. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I, you can't believe the amount of time I spend thinking about this friggin' puppet. <laughs> thanks to <laughs> thanks to producer Jessica. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're spending forever thinking about it. But, uh, but the real, what the actual fuck mm. is this insanity about the big car theft meeting the government put on? <laughs> You know, I've talked about car theft a lot of times, mm-hmm. both on this show and on separate videos, and I've posted a lot about it. Because fuck me, it's nuts. It okay? is. It's yeah. fucking nuts. It's bizarre. Right? It's, it's so bizarre. It's it's out of, it's out of control. Mm-hmm. Okay. And guess what? You know, the government put out a big announcement. We're gonna have a big summit. Mm-hmm. We have a good. So I always start to worry when I hear there's going to be a big meeting mm-hmm. at the government because big meeting at government translates into a lot of talk, fuck all action. Okay, a lot of talk, a lot of eating, but not much. A lot of a lot of television, a lot of video, a lot of posts online, a lot mm-hmm. of online posts everywhere in social media. Look at what we're doing, we're having a meeting. Okay, so they had this fucking meeting, mm-hmm. and sure enough, the prime minister was there. Everyone was there. They had more cabinet ministers then uh i mean like it was a it was a festival of people talking about car theft okay yeah. <laughs> so naturally one of the main things that comes out of it is to blame the government that was out of office for eight years oh well right that yeah, that's all that's, things. that's yeah. always the way right way right mm, right like, of course like the car theft in the last three years has gone up 300 percent mm. 
But it's really the fault of the fuckers who were here eight years ago. Of course, okay? like, of course. I, we're to blame Harper. Prime Minister Prime Minister Trudeau said, yeah, mainly it's Harper's fault who's been gone for eight years. What the fuck is that? Okay? Like, look. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Just, it's so ridiculous. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Like, I gotta talk about that. Oh, and we're gonna we're gonna spend money. We're gonna spend twenty eight million on something, something, study, study, think hard, okay? Okay. So I'll throw some money at it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're gonna talk. We're gonna get cross border. We're gonna. Oh, we're gonna blame the insurance companies too. Oh, of oh yeah, it's all your fault. You should put. You should install better. Oh, we're gonna blame the car manufacturers. Mm, okay, we're gonna, there we need, go. Yeah, you need to have better systems to make sure people can't steal the cars. Right. How about right. this? How about we blame the fucking car thieves? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like fuck. Like there was by the. This was the nuttiest thing that happened. The uh, opposition leader Pierre Polyev said, "We need to we need to punish the thieves more. Yeah, we more than to, a slap on the fucking wrist. More than let them out on bail. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the, the, the three nights later after yeah. we arrest them. Okay, that, that it, let's make it serious jail time. Serious, serious. So you're going in. You we get you got caught twice. You might do years and years of this. Okay, but naturally, immediately in social media, everybody said, "Oh my God, he's trying. He's trying to blame the people who are." those that's the victimless crime fuck you it's not a victimless crime all of our fucking car insurance goes up like yeah. I, my my own my own son's car was stolen right out of his fucking driveway like it's everybody i know every you guys time never I, found it right never it's gone it's gone to some other fucking place who the fuck knows it's in Probably africa somewhere or in africa yeah, somewhere yeah. in middle east like jesus like Christ. sweet fucking jesus like look i want to make this clear don't blame the previous government for fuck's sakes don't blame the fucking insurance companies. <laughs> Don't blame the fucking car. The, you know, can you imagine stating that the car manufacturers just need to do a much better job of making it harder to steal the cars? He's basically like, I'm going to just point and then whose fault is it? Yeah, like, like everybody the in the fuck? meeting, it's your fucking fault, yeah. including the guy. Everyone been, but me. Everybody but, me. but us. And the guy who was gone for eight years is probably him too. Like, <laughs> it's so stupid. Blame the fucking thieves, okay? And to stop the thieves, you got to take the fucking profit out of car theft, okay? Yeah. I mean, if it's up 300%, it's clearly doing good. Yeah. Right? I yeah. mean, they're making money, okay? 100%. Super money. So if we just station 200, 300 cops at the Port of Montreal and another 150 at the Port of Vancouver, because to get to Africa and the Middle they East... to leave from either side. Yeah, they so. got to go, right? <laughs> no yeah. shit. Yeah, they, they got to... They, the only way they can get to the Middle East is to get to Africa, all these cars and these used car lots all over the place. They need to leave the from the port, With yeah. Canadian Ontario plates on them, okay? Yeah. Like, <laughs> they don't even have the audacity to take the plates no, off. Fuck no, fuck oh, no. Oh, 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 that was the other suggestion. Uh, we're going to get more integrated with Interpol, so we... The cars are there! How are we going to get the fucking cars back? Like, this all crazy shit. It's a hot mess. <laughs> Stop the fucking cars from leaving. Make it a fortress at these ports. Yeah. Okay. Scan every fucking container. Check every fucking container. That take the twenty eight million of bullshit money and go do that. Okay. And make sure that the, the, that if you steal a car, it never gets out of the country. Okay. Period. Guess what? Profit gone. Car theft stops. Okay. So simple. So simple. could be so simple. So simple, but not. Of okay. course not. All right, folks, <laughs> next week, we'll see you then. See ya. If you like the pod, well, don't just sit there. Go to YouTube, Apple, Spotify, and all the other ones and like the pod. And don't forget to subscribe so we can keep being angry at mortgages and swearing about mortgages. Angry Mortgage could use your support.